Today, I'm gonna to show you how to refill an SD's E or D12 motor. We're gonna take these crusty old spent casings and refill them with sugar fuel like this. If you have not made fuel before, this is a great way to get started. Make sure you check out my tutorial on how to make sugar fuel. Observe all the safety precautions. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is get our cases ready to go. And we are going to knock all that crusty stuff out with either like this aluminum pin here or a dowel, whatever you have. And what you wanna do is kind of push in towards the nozzle part and make sure you don't push too hard. You don't wanna push the nozzle out because we're gonna use that. So take, take a dowel and push it in, knock all that crunchy stuff out. And then once you get all that out, you wanna come back with a piece of sandpaper and then sand just the very top of it here because we wanna make sure that the sugar fuel uh, forms a good plug there that'll stick to the sides of it and that way it won't blow the fuel out when it gets to the end or at least until we want it to. And once we're finished with that, you can come back with a Dremel or something like that and clean up uh, the end of the nozzle case if it's dirty. Uh, after they've been fired, they kind of get a little crusty looking here. Now this one has already had sugar fuel put through it. I found that they last a couple of times. I don't know if they last any longer than that. Uh, but a couple of uses is great, uh, I think. So you can take uh, like a brass brush and kind of clean that nozzle up a little bit if you want to. Now, I found that one of the nozzles, the uh, it's kind of eroded. The clay is eroded a little bit. And so what I did was is I put some super glue on there, just regular super glue, not gel, and let it sit, sit on there overnight so it gets all nice and solid. And that seemed to uh, firm it up. And uh, I, I think that'll work. Uh, I don't know how it will hold up to the heat, but it seems to have stabilized it for now. Should be good for another use. That's good enough. Okay, then we'll get them all cleaned up, get our tray ready, and start casting the fuel. I have cleaned the cases using uh, this aluminum pin here or a dowel, whatever you have on hand. I used a screwdriver to remove the stubborn pieces that are stuck in there. And you want to be careful that you don't knock the nozzle out because we need to keep that. This wire brush makes quick work of cleaning the ends of the cases, the last inch or so that needs to be cleaned for the fuel to stick to it. And this is a 5 30 seconds drill bit. You need to be able to pass that drill bit through the nozzle so that we can use this bamboo skewer that is marked at 2 and 7 eighths of an inch here. And this is our depth gauge and this is our coring tool. And that's what actually makes the whole thing work is the long core and the sugar fuel. I also have a flashlight so I can check out my work. Uh, you can use a piece of sandpaper to clean the end of it, but I really prefer the, um, the metal brush here. It just does a really good job quickly on the Dremel. Okay, so everything's all cleaned up. I've checked on my work, and so I'm ready to cast the fuel. One last thing I wanna mention is you'll need a pair of leather gloves like this. They don't need to be welding gloves or anything like that, but just a good pair of leather work gloves will keep your hands away from the hot propellant. And that's something you absolutely have to have. And uh, I've also used uh, petroleum jelly here on the end to uh, keep the propellant from sticking on there. You don't need a lot of it, but you just need a light coating of it and, and wipe it off because petroleum jelly does not burn. I think that's it for now. I'll go ahead and start heating the propellant up. And if you've not seen the casting video, go back and check that out. And we'll meet you back here as I start pouring the fuel in. Now it's time to check our work. 
Make sure the bamboo skewers are not frozen up in the fuel or anything. Just give them a twist or two. Now we'll take our skewer, turn it around a few times, kind of run it in and out. Make sure that that core feels solid enough that it will stand on its own and go ahead and twist them out. Everything looks real good. Now after a while you can take and run your skewer back in there if you want to check it make sure it hasn't collapsed or anything or just take the uh, pointed end that doesn't have any fuel on it and it won't be sticky make sure everything looks good the size of the bit works well for this nozzle because you can put an electric e-match in here to ignite these after a few more minutes when you're satisfied that the core is nice and solid then gather them all together and put them inside a Ziploc bag and they are ready to use. Our motors are complete and they look really well. So the question is, what do you do with them? Well, if you own a terraformer or some sort of tumble rocket, you can fly it in this. I like these, they're quick up, quick down, and it's really cheap to fly like that. One thing I'd like to point out is that the end is open. There's no cap or plug in it. You could put a plug in it by leaving some room and putting some epoxy clay or some concrete or something like that in it. Epoxy clay would probably work just fine. You may need to tinker with that just a little bit. You don't want to fly these in a dry area because when it comes down, it's sort of smoking on the way down and uh, it makes for a neat effect, but you don't want that to land in a dry pile of leaves or something like that because it could have had a bad outcome. You need to light the motor from the top. So you need to buy like an E-match or something like this, then insert it all the way into the core of the motor. That's the proper way to light a Bates grain motor or a cord motor, whether it's sugar, APCP, what, what have you. Because if you don't light it from the top, what happens is, is that the flame will begin at the bottom. If you use, say, a fuse, which I don't recommend, it will try to burn towards the top while the exhaust gas is trying to push out the back. And it just does not work very well like that. You won't end up with much thrust. And then sometimes it's called a road flare when it does that. So the proper way to light it is from the top. And the best way to do that is with a fireworks lighter like this Alpha Fire here. It comes with a nice remote. Get at a safe distance, set off your e-match, enjoy the fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. Use the YouTube like button. That works just as well. Keep the pointy end up, the flaming end down. I will see you in the next video.